I'm Josh Jeffsey, Marketing Specialist for the TDA Perks Program. Thanks for tuning in to our second virtual new office symposium in this episode. Blaine Dahl with TDA Financial Services Insurance is going to give us some insight on the types of insurance to consider as you open your practice. Blaine, thanks for being with us. Thanks, Josh. Pleasure to be here today. Um, what I want to do today is kind of give you a brief overview of, of who we are and what we do and obviously how we can help you in the process of, of starting or opening a new practice. So um, the TDA Financial Services Insurance Program, we're an independent insurance agency with the sole purpose of serving our member doctors. Um, what does being independent mean? Being independent means that we don't manufacture any of our own products. And we're not tied to any particular insurance company or product. We truly have uh, the ability to use any company and any product out there in the open market. So that makes us a little bit unique from some of these other um, companies and insurance agencies. The other thing that we do for your benefit is we handle all of the due diligence and scrubbing to make sure that we're only bringing you companies and products that have a strong history in the insurance industry, strong financials, and the best contractual language for the dental specific market. The other benefit that we do or have for you guys is we negotiate special programs and discounts with many of these insurance companies that we can then pass along to you as member doctors. So um, I think that's a big key there and benefit for you guys. So um, what do we do? Five basic aspects of insurance planning that we do. First would be health insurance and ancillary group benefits. So I know when you first start a new office, you probably might not be in a position to do group benefits or a group health insurance plan from day one, um, but you'll get there eventually. And it's something you'll wanna do not only for yourself, but also for your employees um, to help with employee retention, et cetera. So, we do offer multiple different group health insurance plans, and we do offer, you know, the ancillary benefits that come with that, the short-term disability insurance, accident insurance policies, et cetera. So that's, uh, that's the first thing we can help you with. Second thing would be the business owner property and casualty insurance. So this is uh, your business property and contents, business liability, workman's comp, and business interruption insurance. Um, unfortunately, I think we've all had a, um, you know, a real life experience with the business interruption this past uh, week with the cold snap that we experienced here in Texas. Many of us had broken pipes in our homes. I assume some of you have had broken pipes in your offices. Um, and, and it's probably something that is, you might still be dealing with even this week. So. Something like business interruption insurance might be um, a good benefit for you to look into um, for your new office or even for an existing office and kind of adding that onto your policy. So the third thing that we um, do for you as a, as a member doctor is the malpractice insurance. When it comes to malpractice, disability and life insurance, I'm going to lump all three of those together real quick. Rule number one is you always keep your personal insurance separate from your business insurance. Personal insurance is meant to protect you and your family. Business insurance is meant to protect your practice. We don't want to ever commingle the two. So when it comes to malpractice insurance, you obviously have to have your own malpractice policy to protect you um, while you're practicing. There's two basic types of malpractice policies, occurrence and claims made occurrence being the more comprehensive coverage and probably what most of you have. Um, the, the standard limits for malpractice are 1 million, 3 million, meaning 1 million is the most that the policy will pay out per single claim. 3 million is the most that the policy will pay out in a single policy year. So you could have multiple claims in one year as long as they don't total to more than 3 million. Again, that's the standard limits, and I think that's pretty sufficient coverage. You can go up to 2 million, 4 million limits. Um, and where we kind of see that being necessary or something you might want to think about is if in your practice you're doing a lot of 
surgical placement of implants or, you know, partial third molar extractions, fully impacted thirds, et cetera. So 1 million, 3 million occurrence policy. Um, if you're doing some more invasive procedures, you might consider going up to the 2 million, 4 million. The other thing when it comes to malpractice that we want to address is if you're going to be having any other doctors working in your office, whether you hire an associate or maybe you're just bringing in, maybe you're a general dentist and you're bringing in some specialist a day a month or a day a week, whatever it may be. If you're going to have any doctors other than yourself practicing in your office, we want to make sure that we add what's called an entity malpractice policy. And what that does is if, if you have another doctor working in your office and a patient brings a lawsuit against them for something they did, they're going, that patient is going to sue that doctor, but they're also going to try to come after you as the practice owner. That entity policy is what is going to come in and protect you as the practice owner from any liability that may be brought, ag brought against you from other doctors practicing in your office. So it's very important to have that um, if you're gonna have any other doctors in your office at all. Um, the fourth thing is disability insurance. So disability insurance as a dentist, we know is very important. It's all sorts of fine motor skills required to do um, your job and to be able to perform it at a high level. So if anything were to happen to you and you're unable to work or you have to cut back on the days per week you can work or maybe certain procedures you can't do anymore, you want to make sure that your income and your family's income is protected um, against that disability. So first and foremost, got to have the personal disability insurance in force. From there, um, there are business disability policies, which are meant to cover overhead expense, um, practice loans, lease payments, any kind of general overhead expense that you might incur um, for the office and that you might not be able to pay if you're disabled. So this business policy will step in and help pick up some of that liability so that your practice can continue rolling smoothly while you're having to take some time off. Um, the other thing that we have to look at and address on the disability insurance side of things is if you're getting a practice loan to open your new office, the bank is going to more often than not require that you have disability insurance to secure that practice loan. The, you know, they can have you just do proof of coverage to where you just have to prove to the bank that you have disability insurance in force or they could take it a step further and require a collateral assignment. With a collateral assignment, the bank is essentially asking you to name them as a co-owner on the policy. So if something happens to you and you do become disabled, the bank would get first rights at those disability benefits to cover their loan obligation. So um, obviously we wanna make sure that you have a separate business policy, not only for yourself and for your practice, but also so that we can satisfy the lender for your practice loan. Moving on now to life. Oh, real quick on the disability insurance, I will say that there are business specific products that are completely different than the individual disability insurance products. And the business products are much less expensive. Okay. So a lot of times people freak out, you know, if the bank is requiring some business disability insurance, if this could cost me a lot of money, Answer is no. The business policies are usually pretty reasonably priced. So on to the life insurance. So again, going back to rule number one, you have to have personal life insurance first because you want to make sure that if there is a premature death, that your family is protected and that their lifestyle is protected. Once we've taken care of the personal life insurance, then we can start considering the business life insurance very similar to the disability insurance and that typically the bank for the practice loan is going to require a collateral assignment of life insurance. So we would want to get a separate, typically it's a 10 year, 15 or 20 year term life insurance, whatever term aligns with the terms of your loan. 
And we want to have that policy be assigned to the bank so that, if, again, if there's a premature death and something happens to you, the bank is taken care of and they're satisfied and your family still has their full benefits for your personal coverage. So everybody um, is in the best situation possible in a unfortunate circumstance. So um, those are kind of the, the, the rundown of the five main aspects that we help you with as a member doctor and how we come into the process um, with getting or starting a new office or a new practice. Um, I, I get a lot of questions regarding, you know, COVID-19 um, and what this has changed and what's different in our industry. I will tell you that there have been some good things that have come out of COVID-19 as it relates to the insurance industry, and there's been some bad things. So the good thing is that um, historically, if you apply for disability or life insurance, let's say, the insurance company would make you do a physical exam. They would essentially send a phlebotomist to you. They would do a blood draw, urine sample, basic measurements, height, weight, blood pressure, pulse. Due to COVID-19, with all the social distancing, mask wearing, it's just not safe for examiners to be going in and out of people's houses, et cetera. So these insurance companies have waived the physical exam. So that's good, right? Especially if you're someone that doesn't like being poked with needles, giving blood, et cetera. You don't have to do that part of the underwriting process anymore. The bad side to this is that because the insurance companies are no longer doing or requiring the physical exams, it is causing them to rely on medical records from your physicians. And in ordering medical records from your physicians, we are at the mercy of the doctor's office as to how quickly they copy and send over the records to the underwriter. Sometimes it can take a week and we've also seen it take a couple months. So the, there's a the big time frame there in obtaining those records. So what I can tell you um, kind of best practices or best advice would be the second you get to the point in your new practice where you've got the loan requirements figured out, you know exactly what the bank's gonna be requiring from an insurance standpoint, reach out to us so that we can get that process started immediately so that we're not having the insurance be anything that holds you up from closing on your practice loan. So um, with that being said, um, Josh, I think uh, you have some information for contact for our home office in Fort Worth. If you want to, you're welcome to reach out to me directly. Um, my direct line is 979-415-4447 or you can email me at Blaine, that's B-L-A-I-N-E, at T-D-A-MemberInsure.com. Josh, that's all I got, back to you. Thanks a lot, Blaine, that was great. And again, you can get in touch with the main office of Fort Worth at 800-677-8644. You can ask for anyone over there that can help out, certainly Eric Tidke. Blaine, thanks so much, we appreciate you being with us, Very, very informative. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. Sounds good. Thank you.